Aliko Dangote has spent the last 20 or so years converting his trading empire into a manufacturing conglomerate that is now spread across 18 African countries. So he's in a unique position to gauge the impact of the current global downturn on African economies. And he's here with me today at the FT Africa Summit. Uh, Mr. Dangote, how are your businesses weathering this downturn? Well, I think uh, businesses are weathering uh, the downturn very, very, very well. You know, because we've been diversifying our own, uh, you know, business uh, for a very, very long time. And I think what, it in, I mean, what is needed right now in the country or in various countries is the diversification of the various economies, you know, because uh, in trying to go the traditional way, that might not really uh, work. Because if you look at it, uh, one of the biggest issues that we've had in Nigeria is everybody was sort of relying on oil. And, uh, you know, with that, uh, for us, it benefited us even quite a lot. We're building a refinery and petrochemical. So today we'll build them cheaper, like what I said earlier on. And, uh, you know, it's not the end of life if we're taking a downturn, you know, because it's like a graph. That's how business is. But you always have to be ready for good times and also for bad times. But to what extent would you say that the um, demand for some of the basic commodities that you produce, like cement for construction, um, flour, uh, sugar, it is driven by the world price for the natural resources that Africa exports and that, and that contributes so much to government revenues? Well, the cement, for one, um, uh, the consumption might go a little bit down, you know, because of, uh, you know, government uh, revenues, uh, you know, in some few countries. But in Africa, they have always had a deficit. So we might not really see too much of a change. Maybe worst case scenario, we might have the same numbers as last year, you know, because the growth you know, need to be there, you know, because uh, we really don't have much infrastructure in Africa. So if the governments now will try to take that opportunity by building a lot of infrastructure, it will help. Because that is really what fuels the growth of the economy. I mean, you cannot really have, uh, you know, an economy going without a good infrastructure. Uh, so in other words, today, do I think is good the prices of oil, you know, went down, or commodities generally? I think it is good because it is going to now wake us up and make sure that we look at other areas of uh, diversifying the economy and not rely on some of these few basic uh, you know, uh, raw material. Uh, we should try and convert those raw materials into finished goods so that when we export them, we will be earning much, much more. Government should uh, try to see okay, fine, how we do we really attract people to come in and invest because their opportunities are enormous. It's not only in oil or in copper or in uh, coal. I mean, there are so many areas. I mean, you look at it today in Africa. In agriculture, you're going to make huge tons of money you know, because uh, uh, we have 60% of the world's arable land. So with that, you cannot really go wrong. And you go back and look at countries like Nigeria, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, all these countries before, they were living on agriculture. Okay, but unfortunately oil came in and everybody thought, well look, we've had enough. Oil is good enough to give us all what we needed. You know, there was no zeal in terms of growing the other various sectors. So people just jump on oil and even somebody who is just a peasant farmer in the village want to take a bit of, uh, you know, a cut in terms of getting his own oil share. So that's really what destroyed, uh, you know, some of, uh, you know, uh, economies. But right now, things are bouncing back. But practically speaking, your share price has taken a bit of a hit over the last 18 months or so. Um, you've also presumably taken a bit of a hit because of the depreciation of the Naira currency in Nigeria, where most of you know, the, your biggest businesses are. Has that affected the amount of capital available to you to continue expanding your businesses? No, it, it, we, you know, we never really uh, use share 
price as a barometer of our growth. You know, when you look at it really, uh, <clears throat> if you are going to concentrate and uh, look at only share price, you'll never be able to work. But I think the most important thing is the fundamentals of the business. If this business fundamentals are good, if the fundamentals are good, then you go ahead. You know, it is actually the confidence level that will push your price share up or down, or people, if they do understand what you are trying to do. Uh, we've been caught uh, actually on uh, Nigeria's, uh, you know, this is because if you look at it today, people are not looking at, yes, this is Dengoti Cement, for example. It's a very good business. They are, you know, uh, expanding. We believe that they will do well. No, they are looking at, no, Nigeria. And people have already have this f fixation in their head that, no, the currency has to be devalued again. So with that, people are not really coming in with their money to invest in the country. So there's been a loss of confidence. A, a bit of it. But you uh, are, um, at the moment, um, putting together one of the largest ever investments in Africa and in Nigeria with your petrochemicals, fertilizer, and refinery. Um, is it on schedule, just very briefly? Yes, to, it is. To... It's going to be on uh, schedule. The refinery, we scheduled it to be in 2018. When you talk about a refinery, you just think that, yes, it's just an ordinary refinery. You know, William, today the refinery we are building is the largest ever single train in the world, not in Africa. Yes, it's 650,000 barrels. You know, even the Reliance, when they started, was 500,000. You know, in terms of models, yes, maybe they build that now, they are at about 1.3. But our own is a single line of 650,000 which is by far much more than the consumption of Nigeria. So we have to try and sell within the, uh, you know, what's so happening. Yes, we're not really, we didn't um, agree to stop. We've started. And uh, even at $50, $45, the numbers make quite a lot of sense. What we just need to do is to try and squeeze our budget and make sure that we build it below budget and also on time. Mr. Dangate, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, William.